All right, so that was both a chance to perform for you guys and a little bit of a dare to Sony or others that might dare to copyright, copy strike, that might dare to copy strike the YouTube video that we'll put up when, um, when we put that up. So what do we think of that? Good morning, everyone. I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney, now with more camera angles. First of all, beautiful job. Well done. Thank you. I Everybody messed up the end, but uh, you, you might not know it if you, unless you know the actual song, because I totally skipped, like, part of the end. Oh, well. Um, what song was that? Do you want to let people know who don't know? Sure. So that is called One of These Days. It's an original piece. I have a copyright registration on it. So it is a live thing. If someone decides to copy strike that or any part of that piece, that, you know, somewhat generic, folky piano piece, sort of churchy, because that's, you know, how I grew up. This sort of has a lot of generic sounds in it. It's sort of an impro improvised piece. So I don't know. It's possible. Um, as a bigger dare, I thought maybe another opportunity would be to actually try to, to learn some music. But let's talk about the story. Let me get it up here on the thing and we'll, we'll go from there. By the way, we are now a real television studio with real camera angles and a switcher and multiple cameras and I'm really, um, really uh, stoked to have this stuff at uh, our disposal. So this is a story from Boing Boing and Cory Doctoro. I did hear about this on Reddit, but they wrote this up much better than, uh, than I have anything for you. And the story is that a pianist named Rhodes James Rhodes, good good name for a pianist, performed a Bach composition for his Facebook account. It didn't go up because Facebook's copyright system pulled it down and accused him of copyright infringement. Sony Music claimed they owned 47 seconds worth of his performance of the song. Well, there's more to this. Even, even if there's not anything more to this particular, because I don't know any more details than, than this. Uh, that's literally the entire story. The, there's a couple ways this can happen and it can be legal and there's a couple ways this can happen and it can be illegal and you need to know. The, the, there's many different copyrights in music. How could, how could Bach be copyrighted? Bach died 300 years ago. Yes, yes, I get the argument. Bach's original composition as he wrote it down, as he performed it, and all that is absolutely public domain, not copyrightable, and Sony owns no copyright to that. However, that's not how music is sold these days. Sony does not make money selling you sheet music for a Bach composition that's in the public domain so much as they make money writing an arrangement or licensing an arrangement from someone who wrote the Bach composition onto modern sheet music. It might be nearly identical, and there's no copyright in the stuff that's originally Bach. But the new arrangement, let's say they took out some repeated notes that didn't need to be there, or let's say they took out something to accommodate a, a, a way that an old instrument worked that now doesn't work that way or something. That part is copyrightable. And so if you then make a recording of the arrangement, you're technically in violation of a copyright. Even if that arrangement is just that bare minimum copyright, there's still some protection in there and they would still have a colorable meritorious claim. So what I'm getting at is if Mr. Rhodes, my, my favorite name for a pianist, if he was playing an arrangement of a Bach composition, and, and it gets worse the more arranged it is. I have some Debussy over here that is seriously heavily arranged because... Nobody can play like like that. I mean, you, okay, I don't mean nobody. I mean, I mean like that's like the top 0.1% of pianists can play that fast. Um, so for someone like me who spent seven years trying to learn Dr. Gratis at Parnassum um, and has continued a lifetime of trying to master it, uh, you know, it's just, it, it's a constant aspiration. Meanwhile, he was the master. So 
you arrange these things so it's possible for people to play it at an intermediate or beginner level or whatever. And if I then go and perform that arrangement, that is a, a violation of copyright. If if I make a copy of someone's recording of it, that's a violation of copyright. If I, you have to know the basically what I'm getting at. You have to know the entire chain of of ownership of, of how the original composition and how you got it. So if you go to the music store and you buy a piece of sheet music that is not a just just a reproduction of a direct reproduction of an original public domain piece of sheet music, if you buy something and it says arranged by Mark Hayes or arranged by so and so, those things are not are those that's, those have a renewed copyright on them and you won't be able to you you, you will have to accommodate those those copyrights in your in your dealings with publishing and distributing and all that. And yep, this is why high school choral groups can't sing pop songs. Let's go through that one. You you need to have a license on the original music. You need to have a license um, on your ability to perform it publicly. You might need to have a license on your ability to record it on video, and you might need to have a license to then stream it to the to the public. My choir has this problem. Our YouTube channel, uh, which which is not affiliated with Lawful Masses or me, they have a separate YouTube channel. We put stuff up there and just let the copyright claims come, and whatever comes, we don't fight it because we know that that to get there, we've probably violated about four licenses. Technically speaking, even though in spirit everything seems fine. Um, you know, we, 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 we probably violated a two or three or four licenses to get there if we put something like that up. Other things, we have sort of an implicit or even sometimes an explicit permission from the copyright holder as long as they can claim some monetization. But when we do a mainstream um, media, like like recording industry level song, like billboard level song, we don't we don't put those up. There's too many, too many problems. So this is an area you can help inform me on the mandatory statutory licensing rights. How would that interface with this? Mandatory statutory licensing is only, as far as I know, for a couple specific scenarios. One is the right to cover. So the right to cover means the right to perform live for a live only audience, not record, not republish, not, um, um, not sync to video and stream to your channel. There is also a, a, a compulsory right to cover for recording. I believe it's a different rate, or I'm not sure. I, I, don't, I haven't done that, so I really, I really couldn't tell you exactly the, the, how those overlap. But there is a compulsory right to cover for both performance and audio recording and distribution, but not video sync. So then... Um, Streaming, there is a compulsory right to stream, I believe. You, they have to notify you and then pay you a minimal royalty of very little money, a couple pennies per thousand or something. Yeah, that's not an area of copyright law I'm particularly well familiar with. And while on a policy level, you can kind of understand the rationale for why you'd want to separate the things, it does seem slightly odd that you would be able to perform a work but not necessarily record it or not necessarily distribute it in particular means. It seems like if you have the ability to to sing it, then the ability to record it seems like it should follow, even if that's not the way the statute reads. Pretty sure that, that they have a compulsory right to, to perform, record, but not to sync to video. So yeah. if you want to post it to YouTube, you have to find out first what the, what the policies are. When we posted a couple mainstream songs to our patron stream a few weeks ago, that's because I don't monetize the patron stream and I just allowed those claims. Uh, but I also looked those up ahead of time and made sure those particular songs were allowed on YouTube as long as you allow the claim, because I otherwise would get a copy strike. Sorry, I'm I'm um I, I happen to like that word. <laughs> I hate that word so much. That's why I, well, not because you hate it, but I, I, I like the word because it's so wrong. It's just so, such a yeah. wrong word that I like it. It's, it's just weird. That's just, this is how it works for me. Sorry. 
It's also slightly amazing when we compare the patent rights versus the copyright rights because the patent term, when they originally created the thing, was 17 years from issue. And then they changed it in the late 80s, I believe, to 20 years from filing, which is supposed to work out the same, but it was to prevent a particular problem, not to really extend the term. So the term was basically the same now as it was in 1776 when they invented it. Whereas in copyright world, the term originally was 14 plus 14, and now it's decidedly not that. So it's interesting to see how the two have uh, diverged in their, in their term scope. And that's our show, everyone. Thank you for joining me. I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. This is a community supported channel. Thank you very much for your support on patreon.com slash LJ French. We have a number of excellent supporters here in the month of September. Thank you very much to Jonathan Doe, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Andy, Kyle Mudrock, Vera Mintane, Sean McNamara, William Gonzalez, Michael Pierce, Grunkle Tia Marie, Terry Crisp, Richard Fournier, and Michael Jones. And thank you to the many, the 200 plus, $5 plus supporters that are scrolling on the LED panel behind me. And I will find room for everyone on the crawl at the end of the videos that drop this week. Thank you very much for putting up with all of my camera angles and all of that. This is only the beginning. I'm going to learn how to use all of this in a uh, kind of a constructive and helpful way and bring you some, uh, some more productive, more efficient, more uh, visually appealing videos. Hey. Come here. Say hi. Say hi. Good boy. Good boy. Say hi to the people. Both dogs. Ilsa. Ilsa, hello. Can you come up too? Go girl. Go girl. <laughs> Don't hump her. <laughs> hey. No. <laughs> All right. I'll see you guys later. Have a good one. Bye.